that this guy is, has a level streaming instance info. Get level instance info? Alright, so. What is this get level instance info? Yeah, this guy's doing pretty much the same thing, but it's... Add to streaming levels is not working, though. Alright, so let's run a dedicated server and see what the client log is going to tell us for this sort of thing. Hmm. This is turning out to be kind of a dead end, I think, maybe, which is frustrating. Because I would expect, like, okay, go load a level, and it, like, it loads the level in, that it would replicate to the, the clients if it was a multiplayer thing like why why is it not it doesn't really seem to make sense to me okay your connection to the host was lost um Alright, load level is true. Receive sequence bunch. Um, network failure. What? It's just not working. Well, let's just... Okay, so there are three ways in which non-seamless travel. Alright, so we need to do... We'll jump the server to a new world. All client, all connected clients will follow. This is the way multiplayer games travel from map to map. And the server is the one in charge to call this function. The server will call a player control client travel for all clients that are connected. Okay, so we want to just call server travel. Let me just try that. Okay. Not replicated. So instead of calling, let's just do like a load level 
to net load level two. And um, what we're going to call is server travel. Can we even call server travel? All right, fuck it. Server travel and blueprint. Yeah, where the fuck is it? Currently, server travel isn't exposed directly to blueprints, although we'd like to add it. As a workaround, you can call execute console. Oh, what the fuck? Server travel is not. Ah, uh, come on, Unreal. That's pathetic. Well, I think I'm going to have to do the seamless travel flow stuff here. Alright, so let's go to our... Level utils, I believe. So I'll have to just start again. Basically, that load level stuff doesn't work for what we want to do. Alright, so static, uh, void, start server travel. Const f string level path level. Just level path level. Alright, Okay, so we want to get the world. Otherwise, we're calling world uh, server travel. So let's go look it up new world Unreal server travel. So it takes an end URL absolute should skip game mode notify. Jumps to server to new level. If absolute is true, we use seamless traveling. If we do not, um, okay. So. I think our game instance is the thing right now it does stuff. Alright, so do level load. We're calling with this level load data URL. True, true. So, I guess we can call get level load data on our game instance. We can just travel to the next world that way. Or try it at least. So we'll just travel to the same world that we're in right now. Well, let's look at the level load data. Hmm. 
URL. Okay, so let's make our options here. So It's our level, load delay, URL, server travel. All right. So this is all we really need, I guess. So that's our URL. Okay. So it's actually simpler than I thought. We have to do two string. And this is going to be URL absolute, whether we're using relative or absolute travel. If absolute is true and we're using seamless traveling, we will do an absolute travel. Um, right. Documentation is not super amazing here. Should skip game notify. False. I believe. The absolute. Absolute whether we are using relative or absolute travel. Like that. If absolute is true we are using seamless traveling okay so I guess it's supposed to be like this this is I, I don't like how all this stuff comes together like The documentation says one thing, the code says another, the other documentation says something else, and then none of it works is usually how this goes when I start screwing around with this crap, which is never fun. <laughs> it's like, hey, can we do seamless level traveling? And it's like, can you explain what you mean exactly? It's like, yeah, that's how you know.
All right, so supposedly server travel should just work TM, supposedly, uh, looking at the docs. It says it should work. It doesn't need to be seamless um, for it to work. It's just like, okay, well, I don't really need it to be seamless. I got the UI that can pop up and like do stuff. So I really don't care about seamless travel or not. In fact, I, I really don't need to move actors around or anything. I, I kind of want to just kill all of them. So that's totally fine with me if it's not seamless travel. It's great. No problem. Done. Um, but we'll see if any of this stuff actually does what it says it should, because I bet it doesn't. All right, so we're gonna call net load level two, and we're gonna pass this in there, and we're gonna remove these two variables, and we'll just see how that goes. And we'll just do it with a dedicated server because that's easiest to load up, I believe. So this should load the second level, which should have nothing in it. when we're finished. Okay, server arena test refused, what? We are loading a new level. Player joined from the client. Holy shit, did it actually fucking work? All right, well, maybe we should pick a level that exists. That's not what I wanted to do. Okay, so we're going to load the foggy night level after we load this level. And see what it looks like. Because if this just works, then that's very surprising to me. Because I thought I had looked at this and like stuff just didn't work at all months ago. I thought this was going to be much more of a pain in the ass. Okay, inning server arena test refused, accepting connection. Um, all right, output. Uh, sending hello, pending that driver. Um, well, it looks like we got the ball and we got everything else rolling around here. But our access none trying to read property all this stuff. We're unable to place an object on the ground. Host has changed. We are not host. Um, let's try reloading the UI. Alright, let's check out our game options.
What was our admin? One, two, three, four. Yeah, so let's end the match. So can the bots play? Like, is this just an issue with the the game mode? Player announce, begin sending events. All right, let me change the audio. I can hear people playing in the background. When snapping to the floor, unable to actually move to the snap location. You know, the bots are definitely doing stuff. So we have a player controller. Entity actor anywhere. That guy's moving. That guy's not moving. That guy's moving. That guy's moving. This guy is, who is this? It's red, it is a player, so that's us, so we're not moving. So why aren't we moving? All right, so is me is true. All right, let's see, is the game in progress? False. Uh, so we're gonna go to false. So the game is not in progress. That's what's going on. Oops. So we're not actually, the game is not in progress. All right, so stop. Uh, that's what's going on. So let's take another look at this. The seamless level travel that we have here is absolute weather. We are using relative or absolute travel. Let's try setting this to false. Let's see how this goes. So it looks like everything worked except for like our detection for if we're still playing the game and stuff like that, which should be fixable. So we'll see how that is. It's already Thursday. Gee, yeah.
Okay. Free client travel. Sending hello. Um, so we're in arena test. Now we are in foggy night. Holy shit, it did it actually do the thing? Looks like we had some issues with some of our blueprints, but like that's me in a new level on the same server without getting kicked. That is pretty awesome. Okay, so let's add some bots. And then let's end the match. It didn't didn't fucking end the match. Let's just have all these guys on the blue team, including me. Why can't I? Oh, I can kick that guy and do that. Okay, that's fine. Oh, come on, blue team. Stop being a bunch of a-holes. I'm trying to... I'm trying to score for our team, and the bots are fucking it up. Why well, you gotta be like this, bots? Alright, that one was on me. Alright, so that score works. Killing leaked actor affects player v wall. Ooh, all right. Something's going on with some of these particle systems that are leaking. Glad I'm paying attention to that. Okay. Come on, bots. I had all the time in the world. Okay, so, uh, ensuring disable all timeouts. Sending hello, a net driver. Um, pre client travel. Uh, world net driver destroyed. Set all that stuff. Okay, so the question is did the bots transition? The bots did not transition. Okay. Um, but we transitioned. So, what we want to do now is to boot up like three players against our dedicated server locally and then we'll see if the server travel still works. Um, so let's throw up our dedicated server over there. Get our two clients rolling along.
Okay, so server arena test refused. Um, game mode constructor. Everybody appears to be shutting down. Match is finished. Get ready. Match is finished. Match is finished. Um, let's see. Uh, all the players joined. Um, I think maybe we switch teams. Let's see, 241 is on this team. Let's just go ahead and score and win. I <laughs> like how I'm getting I'm getting audio from all these. So I've got like I hear three different score sound effects. <laughs> It's a lot easier without the bots fucking everything up. Okay, so we should travel to the next server again. Looks like we've loaded in with this client. Um, it looks like we have entirely new usernames. All right, well, let's just change ourselves to the blue team. And I'm pretty sure what's going to happen here is our none of our settings are going to get saved. Get in there, you little fucker. I'm going to see if uh, I'm still on the blue team or not. So I believe it's going to go through the exact same join flow as normal. And we're on the red team. Right, okay. Okay, so server travel does work. Um, the next question is if server travel works in shipping. So let's go ahead and do our test build for that. Yeah, let's grab our UI folder and make sure it's in the right spot there. And I'll be right back.
Well, this might take a little while to actually build. So let's see. We want to make sure this actually works. So interesting, server travel actually does work. So that's excellent. Um, when a client executes an unseamless travel, the client will disconnect from the server and then reconnect to the same server, which will have the new map ready to load. It is recommended that you use seamless travel when possible. It will generally result in a smoother experience and avoid any issues that can occur during the reconnection process. You know, I, I, I'm okay with that um, not being seamless. That's okay with me. Um, the reason we're not using seamless travel also has to do with the way assets are loaded. There's some bugs with loading of assets, which we had to just be like, what the fuck? So we're just going to wait for this build to go through. So what we'll, what we'll do is we'll have, if we select a new map, we'll be able to travel to that new map and all that fun stuff. Yeah, we'll need like a countdown, then like a fade timer, some of the other crap as well. So like a notify RPC saying, hey, we're going to change level. Well, when you're waiting for a, a build, just think about how you're slowly dying. Hello, Endo Scorpion. How's it going? I am. I'm working on level transition flow, so having the server actually be able to say, "Hey, we're gonna go load the grassy, sunny day level." after playing the nightly level and stuff like that. Making that possible so we can do that. And then I'll have to figure out how we want all that to work. I am doing well. Well, I'm doing better than I was. It was real frustrating dealing with the UI stuff earlier this week. That pretty much... I was done. I am done with that. Well, it needs to be more than just that. Like, we have the whole level transition where we need to go from, like, map to map. We want, since we'll actually have more than, you know, two maps or whatever, um, we also want to have, you know, more different game modes, crap like that. So, you know, what, what, I, what I'm thinking is we have, like, I'm going to have to do a mock-up of what I want it to look like, but I want the level transition flow to have like a ready-up thing where people can click like I'm ready to go, and then it'll move on to the next map, and stuff like that. And then maybe we could people could vote on different game modes. 
like presets or something like ball is super fast or can't punch people in the face or something along those lines or like you know game modes like you can punch people but they don't get stunned like you punch them and they just like fly in a direction for a, a second or something instead of getting stunned or something like that I don't know a lot of small things that we might work with but the first step to doing that is being able to just transition to a new frickin' map Yeah, I'm kind of thinking about it more in terms of kind of a playlist. So I think similar, a similar thing would most likely be like Halo um, with its kind of you can vote for the next map sort of thing and you can kind of see who's voting. So, um, so it'd be like, you know, here's like four choices. You could play Nightly Bog. Um, no contact, you know, like four or five choices or something. And like one of them would be like other or something. And if you clicked on it, you could see like how many people voted for it. And um, then you could, you know, people could kind of figure it out. And at the end of when the timer counts down or whatever, it would just take the highest vote or random. And, and kind of also not always... I will see. Five choices in a random? Yeah. I want to do that. Oh man, I need to do something about this sound. Why couldn't we join? Huh? Like we've got team size of three set. What? So we're going to go to join. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, login, blah, blah. Post login call for player. Why, why do you get kicked? Has not defined or no player start with a positive rule.
Okay, the URL for this for travel. Is no map, huh? Okay, so like the you've entered the empty level, no level load. Okay, so like I guess it doesn't work anymore. Uh, the join by IP. Or maybe I should change something. Maybe I should host on a different port and join there. Maybe there's some getting screwed up there. Advanced, uh, Yeah, well, something's definitely wrong there. All right, well, why don't we just log in with our players and see if we can join that way. Alright, well, this is frustrating to deal with, but um, why don't we just do it against prod since that will at least allow me to connect. Back in as ourself. All right, so we'll create a game, start it. And when we browse games, we should be able to see our game. Yeah, okay, so we can join it. And those are all the prod games that we can actually join. But we can join this one. Okay, so this guy is the host. Um, so I should be able to go ahead and win. All right, so ending play, post game calls, um, joining foggy night, and we both spawned in, and I am on blue. All right, so it works in shipping as well. Yeah, the, the host frame rate is trash. Because it's on my other monitor. 
Yeah, this the foggy night level is real CP uh, GPU heavy. It's it's kind of a big pain in the ass. It's gonna be that grass. That's what it looks like. <laughs> you can see how the uh, because of the the frame rate of this is so different the physics are all off all right so we'll rejoin to foggy night again and it looks like that works okay so okay, so it does work in shipping mode okay cool so it actually does do what it should that's pretty fucking crazy um, nice It looks so pretty. Yeah, the um, well, there's some big issues with the the foliage shadows. Um, like basically right now, the foliage shadows are super fuzzy because we're actually like taking shadow maps from lights that are way out, and as a result, they're fuzzy. And that's not how you're supposed to do it. Um, so we're like really horrible performance in order to get this fuzzy effect. Like it's not what you want to do. Uh, when we should have like sharp shadows and use probably different geometry for casting shadows than the sharp leaves and everything. And as a result, they're just super wasteful. But we'll get there. Like uh, it, it works right now, so we're not gonna we're not gonna fix what ain't completely broken. Uh, all right, so leaked actor, player v wall, C0 after 30 seconds. Check SFX cleanup and particle systems. So it looks like player stun impact ground, player v wall. All those actors are getting leaked. So stun impact ground, all right. Let's go take a look at these. So it's player, so it's player v wall. Hoping to fix ping issues for update two. Uh, the ping, like the ping not showing up in the UI for other players. Um, no, I'm not gonna fix that. That's, that's such a minor issue that I don't think I'm gonna get to it. And it just doesn't matter. <laughs> like. I'll just remove it from the fucking UI <laughs> for, for other people uh, rather than fix it, probably. So, play SFX, kill on Anim finished. It's probably that the particle system isn't playing, so this thing just doesn't blow itself up on the server. Alright. Oh, um, well, the snaky trajectory, like, literally, you're not going to be able to do jack shit about this snakiness. Like, it's a high-speed game, and if you've got, like, a 200 ping, it's going to look like that. That's just reality. We could try to fix it and, like, make it look better, but you'd basically be showing people something that's not anywhere close to reality, and they'd get frustrated because they'd be like, I hit the fucking ball! It didn't work! What the hell? But the high ping advantage is a different problem. And um, we'll be solving that in a few different ways. A lot of stuff where, like, if you if you hit it and your ping is too high, the server's just going to be like, you know, that other guy hit it, you know, 100 milliseconds ago, and your ping is, like, 200. Um, I'm not going to let you touch that ball. It, it got touched by this other guy, not you, so... We're not gonna. We're just gonna not have you hit it. So this is kill on Anim finished. 
So basically, we need to just like have this thing not run on the server is the plan. So we need to go to our player object. So player v wall. So we won't play that effect on the server because we don't need it. Stun impact ground. 